It is Camp NaNoWriMo Day 21. It's Saturday. And I just wanted to check in with you guys and talk to you guys about my night. Oh, this pollen. And Teddy's just frolicking through the grass, tall grass, like, you know, fleas aren't a real thing. Get out of that grass, Teddy. Anyways, I just wanted to come on here. Hold on. All right, y'all. Oh. Oh my god, you guys just totally just missed an epic showdown between Teddy and this dog. <sighs> the dog was way bigger than him, and I think Teddy thinks that he is a huge dog in a small dog's body, because that's how he behaves. But um, yeah, y'all missed it. I had to <sighs> I had to go deal with that really quickly. He was going wild, he was barking like crazy. Oh, oh my gosh, sorry, I just had to make sure that dog is long gone but anyways um yeah i just wanted to check in with y'all about my nanorimo story um last night was really good i stayed up till 2 a.m writing and i got to page 55 which is amazing and i am super excited about where the story is going right now and i just wanted to talk to a little bit about my writing process with this story i am not writing in chronological order i've actually been writing the story in scenes so I've written the most I would guess I would say the most important scenes first and then I'm going to write like the connector scenes and the scenes where it seems like nothing is happening but they're the transitional scenes and they're important and a lot of times you know a lot of us we save those scenes for last because they don't seem as exciting to write they're not as important but they are important because they're the, the trans I uh, can't talk they're the transitional scenes that transition us from one event to another, one, you know, from a peak to a lull, from a climax to a climax, you know, those scenes are very important. So, I don't know. It's not that I find them boring to write. Um, I've written stories in chronological order before, just this story isn't one that I've been writing in chronological order. And I've just been writing as it moves me. Hold on, guys. I'm still not used to vlogging in public, forgive me. Writing update, I reached page 65. I'm exhausted, so I got my sleep cap on, I'm laying down. I'm done for today, I'm done. Just for reference, I'm at 20,675 words. I just had to go check. So that's my current word count, 20,675. Not bad. not liking his new haircut too much but we shall persevere won't we Just a heads up, I'm not going to read the actual scene to you all, but this is something that I put in my outline for the opening scene, if you would like to hear it. 
me just pull up my outline. Here we go. The first scene depicts our main female protagonist waking up in bed beside someone she doesn't really know, a one night stand. This person is not even really an acquaintance. It's her history professor. Everyone in the English department knows that he's going through a divorce and now she slept with him. They were at a department party the night before. He holds one every year and invites his favorite students. They come and drink wine, talk literature, and a little bit about university in general and how their classes are going, and then they go home. There's hard liquor available as well. It's usually a small and intimate gathering of about no more than 10 students. They have dinner before they commence to the more philosophical part of the evening. In the past, Professor Gardner's wife prepared the meal and they were welcomed into their home. And now that they are separated and getting a divorce, the party was held at a private room at the hotel that Dan Gardner is staying in long term while he and his wife divvy up their assets via their lawyers. It's no secret either that Dan has been cutting a wide swath through his female students ever since he and his wife separated over a year ago. He's bitter and trying to heal. His wife, Emily, left him actually to pursue a career. She left the workforce to focus on Dan's career in academia and to raise their daughter full time. Full time. Now their daughter is school aged and Emily would rather have a life of her own and be single. She married Dan straight out of college and never really had time for herself to become whoever she wanted to be. She feels cheated out of this part of her life and deeply regrets getting married so young. Although she still loves Dan and wants the best for him, she no longer wishes to be married to him. She feels trapped in their relationship and instead wants to be free to pursue her own dreams and goals by herself. She doesn't feel the need to sacrifice herself any longer or to put him first. She wanted to get out sooner rather than later before her resentment turned to hate. While she doesn't hate being a mother, she does regret it. It's Camp NaNoWriMo, day 30, 30, whoa, 25. And I wanted to talk to you guys about that last clip that you just saw and why I gave so much background information on the professor's wife. And she is going to actually crop back up in the novel as a very important character. So I just wanted you to know like her background, the professor's background and the situation our main female protagonist has kind of entangled herself in and what's going on. And also I wanted to shine a light in this novel on certain topics concerning women in their relationships. A lot of women choose to sacrifice themselves, their careers, their dreams, their wants and their desires for their husbands and they put, or their partners, and they put their, par their partners before themselves and they place their children before themselves. And a lot of resentment can end up forming. Um, and, you know, women can become very bitter behind this decision, which seemed like the best decision, decision at the time, but they end up regretting it. So I just kind of wanted to talk about that in this novel because it is a very strong theme in this society and in the world. Women are very self-sacrificing and at times are forced to self-sacrifice and kind of the things that we as women have to kind of pay a price for you know for that decision whether forced or chosen at the time so I wanted to explore that and like I said the wife will come back into play later on in the novel so I just wanted to drop that teaser there but yeah so uh, NaNoWriMo Camp NaNoWriMo day 25 and I am 90 pages into this novel there's a lot of exposition so um, right now, which I'm gonna go back and editing and really like clean up and get rid of, but sometimes I have to write out exposition just to kind of get my thoughts out there and to remind myself of what the scene is supposed to be and what the details are supposed to be and what the point of the scene is supposed to be and then I go back in and actually fully flesh out, clean up and write the scene, so. Yeah, so exposition writing helps me to kind of mentally keep track of where I am in the story and what I'm trying to convey in a particular scene or chapter and then I go back in and actually write out the scene and clean it up and it helps me to remember exactly what it is I'm trying to say at that point in the novel so um, 
As always with every project I have, my characters have hijacked the novel. I did have an idea of where the story was going and I will say that 70% of my outline is, you know, being fulfilled and then there's that 30% that, <laughs> you know, the characters have kind of taken over and are doing their own thing. So I think that's a pretty decent balance just because I am writing this story very intentionally. There are a lot of strong feminist themes in this particular novel that I'm trying to get across. So I didn't want my characters to get too, too out of hand. I still wanted to make sure that I could express exactly the messages that I really, really want to express in this novel. Messages that you don't see a lot of in new adult fiction, especially romantic new adult fiction, especially contemporary romantic new adult fiction. So there are just things about female protagonists to me that are important to execute and to flesh out in any story that I write. So I wanted to make sure that this story did not miss that, you know, as well. I don't know and I'm not sure exactly what I wanted to talk about. Um, I just wanted to kind of space everything out in my thoughts and make sure that I fill you guys in on everything. Excuse this mess over here. But um, I don't even know what to say. I've thought about doing a writing Q&A, so, but I feel like I wouldn't get enough questions for a writing Q&A, and I don't really know what else to say about this process. I almost feel as if, as I've gotten mm, more experienced with writing novels, I've started to say less. It's a little hard for me to share my process, and it used to be extremely easy for me to share my process. You guys can go back and watch my first NaNoWriMo vlogs that I ever did on this channel and it was kind of how I created this channel. I had a lot to say and it was as if a dam was burst because I had been stifled for years and that was the first time that I was really getting back to writing, you know, full time, writing that much in every day. and. I was just starting to get my confidence back as a writer after years of having it been stripped away and feeling, you know, incompetent or feeling as if I wasn't good enough. So as I've gotten further into my process as a writer, I feel that I've been quieter and not as prone to sharing my creative process. And I'm trying desperately to change that. I want to be able to connect with you guys more about my writing and speak more freely about it. I feel very protective about my story ideas right now. Um, not necessarily that I feel like someone watching this video could steal my story ideas, but you never know. And you know, I'm not published yet, so I just feel very protective over my ideas. And I do want to be able to provide um, guidance. For some of you and those of you that need guidance or you know motivation or advice so that's why i persevere with these vlogs every time i do a nanorimo session that's why i continue to um make writing videos even though i haven't really made that many in the past few years but i almost feel an obligation to present my not necessarily my process, but my experience um, to you guys in hopes that it will help someone. So I say all of that to say that this is the last NaNoWriMo vlog that will be going up, Camp NaNoWriMo vlog, and I just want to open up the floor, you know? If there are any writers watching, do you guys have any questions? I feel weird saying that I want to do a formal Q&A because like I said, I don't feel as though I would get enough questions, but I also want to just open up the floor to see what types of writing videos would you all want to see from me, if any, you know, I don't want to presume that you would actually want to see any writing videos from this channel, but I do want to make them and I do want to open up that part of myself again and start to share that side of myself again and I think it's valuable. You know, I opened up an Instagram account for my writing for that reason. I want to be vulnerable in that way. I think it's important. 
I think that there are, are people out there that want to connect with me and with you if you are a fellow writer that feels the same way that I do. And there's a sort of vulnerability that comes from calling yourself a writer if you're not published. It's, all, it's almost as if you feel like you're not entitled to the title because your work hasn't been validated on a, you know, a socially acceptable platform via a publishing house or even those authors that are able to make a decent living off of self-publishing. It can sometimes feel as though, you know, you are a clown or a jester or you're playing pretend when you call yourself a writer because there is no worldwide acknowledgement for you with that title behind you and it can be very humbling to say that you're a writer but I can also say that it is very empowering and for the past five years while I've been in exile of sorts <laughs> living away from home my home which is New York City even though I grew up in these parts and I've moved back I consider New York to be my home and I consider this to have been an exile of sorts in the sense that I took myself away to hone my craft without distractions, without um, really leaving room for naysayers to have an opinion on what I was doing. And it exposed me. It exposed me in a way that made me feel very vulnerable and I still feel very vulnerable. And it's given me time to practice my craft, but also to practice saying that I'm a writer and owning that title and owning everything that comes with it. I live in a town where when I say I'm a writer, people are immediately intrigued and interested and, you know, automatically a lot of connotations and labels come with me saying that and people are very very enthused when I say that they want to know what I'm working on what type of writer where I work etc etc and although I have done some free freelancing work and some editing work I am mostly unpaid I spend my days writing stories that the world may never read I mean I hope they do and I did make a video last summer talking about how I want to self-publish and I had hopes of self-publishing this summer, but I had to prioritize. And when I looked at my finances, the choices were to self-publish or to move back home to New York. And I just knew I had to choose myself in the sense that I had to choose my personal life over my career in this one instance, because I have to choose moving back to a place that will give me the wings to fly and that will give me the confidence to step out boldly in my career choices that will kind of give me the foundation underneath my feet to feel happy enough to really get out there and to put my writing out there and that was the decision that I made and that I came to so it hasn't gone according to plan and I really did think that by now I would be getting ready to self-publish, if not having already released one of my novels out into the world. And instead, everything has definitely taken a turn. And you know, that's life. You have to go with the journey and I have to do what's best for me. And I have to do things in an order that, that's gonna benefit my overall well-being and my overall life. And I have to exercise patience because this is certainly not what I envisioned for myself at this point in my life, at my age and have, after everything I've experienced. But I will say that if you have a dream and you have the talent to back it up, you have to believe in yourself. And it doesn't matter how many years it takes to make your dream a reality. You have to continue to get up every day and believe in yourself and put the energy into your craft and what you're doing and trust that everything in due time will come to fruition. And that's kind of how I live my life. Um, you know, it's something that I've made a conscious decision to do in the sense of having a positive mindset and also in trusting my instincts and my intuition. 
and trusting God, trusting God's plans for my life and, and taking it one step at a time. I can't see the whole staircase, but he always illuminates the next step. So I don't really know where this is going. I didn't plan to say all this, but something just told me to turn on the camera and start talking. And I really hope that this helps someone out there. I hope that you can see that we're all on the same path, even though all of our paths may look different. We're all on this journey. And if you haven't accomplished what you thought you would accomplish at this point in your life, you're not alone. <laughs> I'm not alone. You know, we're all in this together. And I guess I've learned after I made that video last year not to make any concrete plans until they become concrete plans. So for those of you that still message me and ask me, you know, when will I be able to read your book or your books? And, you know, what's your long-term plans? What are your long-term plans for your writing? I just want to assure you that when it, there is something to announce, I will announce it and it will be very definite. And until then, I will be working silently and I will be accomplishing the things that I need to accomplish in a timely manner. But when I make an announcement, then you'll be sure to know that, that it's time. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this vlog here. And I know I said that this is the last Camp NaNoWriMo vlog, but I just realized that it's only day 25 and I definitely want to show you guys the rest of this journey. So stay tuned. I will be including a clip right after this of the rest of my Camp NaNoWriMo journey. Okay. Thank you guys. Bye. No writing yet today. Camp NaNoWriMo day 26. I'm gonna try to get a few pages in before the end of the night. Teddy and I are just on our walk. Today is lit. So pretty outside. Look at that pretty blue sky. Walking with one. Gorgeous day. Ted Word and I. It's pretty. Ted. Ted. Walk fast. That's how far away he is from me. You're making me go to home. Unbelievable. validator paste your writing project and then I just hit validate so it's about to go down there we go <gasps> Yay! congratulations you spent this past month digging deep into your creative backpack and adding new tools to help you achieve your latest writing goal whether you had to fill a stubborn blank page, get rid of an extra plot bunny, or give yourself proper credit for writing a kick-butt scene, enjoy the fruit of your labors, you've done something incredible, you've created something that didn't exist just a few weeks ago, we're so proud to have been a part of your journey, and now, 
time for a few rewards. So here we go. Congratulations again, winner. We're so thrilled to have written with you. Brandishing tools from our creative backpacks together. Celebrate your win using the hashtag Camp Nano Rhino. Rhino? Camp Nano Winner 2018. So here's the certificate which I am going to print out. And of course they have like the swag that you can get if you're interested. Twitter header, Facebook cover. I mean, it's a lot. I don't think I'm gonna do all that. But I am very excited to have gotten to my goal. Oh, and that's what I was using to write. You guys remember from my first nano vlog. So I'm gonna go ahead and print this out. I'm getting ready to print this. I'm gonna fill it in. This is the first one I've ever printed, so that's pretty cool. So here it is, my certificate. I have filled it out appropriately. Camp NaNoWriMo Day 28. It is currently 1.34 p.m., so I'm making great time today. I can pretty much relax for the next few days. Take a breather, because I've been working really hard. Don't mind the printer in the background, but here is the home page. I won, and this is my final word count when all is said and done. 8,800, wait. 88,122 words. Yeah, that was a mistake. There's no way I wrote that many words. Um, this is my final word count. 35,595 words. I'm at about 113 pages right now, give or take. I'm using Time New Roman font, size 12, 1.5 spacing. So yeah. The story is nowhere near complete, so, but I met my goal. I think what happened is when I went to copy and paste my novel into the validate box to validate, you know, everything to see if I won, I copy and pasted it twice by accident or something. I don't know what happened, but dude, if I could write almost 100k words in like three weeks, that would literally be amazing. I think I would probably be a best-selling author by now. But yep, there it is. Not quite as impressive, but I'm super proud of it nonetheless. Here is my certificate in my hands, nicely printed out, fresh, beautiful. And I think what helped me out this time around is I wasn't keeping track of my word count as I was going along. I actually kept track by counting how many pages I was writing each day. So I was keeping track by page count rather than word count. And I feel like it helped me to lose myself in the story and just focus instead of thinking, oh, I have to hit a certain amount of words each day. I would just kind of set a goal for myself of I want to write this many pages today and that helped me a lot more and I noticed I wrote a ton look how many words I wrote okay it's not focusing there we go I wrote a ton and I didn't even start on the first day you know so I think that's going to be something that I learned from this Camp NaNoWriMo that I'm going to be used moving forward for all my other writing projects. Day 29 of Camp NaNoWriMo and I am straight chilling because I won. I have my certificate here. It's all upside down. I printed it out yesterday. I just finished up at work, so I am feeling really good about life right now. I'm feeling really good about myself. I'm about to go get me a smoothie and enjoy the rest of this beautiful Sunday. It's gorgeous out here. And why do I look so weird? Shadows making me look 89. But yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this beautiful weather and me and Teddy are about to have ourselves a nice little day. 
and yeah this is the end of my Camp NaNoWriMo vlogs I just wanted to come up on here and say goodbye and that's pretty much it I will keep you guys updated on this particular story and this draft and how it's going periodically I do plan on doing Camp NaNoWriMo the July session so I will probably continue to work on this story through the summer and I will also be moving to New York in a few months so I will definitely be vlogging so if you enjoy moving vlogs stay tuned for those and um, I was enjoy enjoying doing like reading vlogs earlier this year and late last year but kind of fallen off so I might have to reimagine those vlogs into some type of creative video idea um, I'll keep you guys posted on that but yes that's pretty much it I will catch you guys in my next scheduled video and I hope all of you guys who participated in Camp NaNoWriMo I hope it went well for you I hope you achieved your goals if not there's always the July session and the November session all right bye guys <laughs>